Welcome back to Santa Fe Fashion Week's YouTube channel. We have met before, I'm Stephen Cuomo, executive producer of Santa Fe Fashion Week, and also a wannabe actor. And so once a week, we host these film studies here at my office, it's my eBay store. And so David's gonna run the class today, and then Mandy, you brought something you're working on. So cool. And then we have Chris behind the camera, so let's uh, get right into it. So David, what'd you, what'd you bring today? I brought a scene from The Exorcist. Nice. And brought the scene from last week that we didn't use from Chinatown. So you're really like a 1970s circa, because the, what was that film? It's yeah. called Classics. The Classics. That was filmed <laughs> around the 1970s, right? That uh, the, uh, yes. Exorcist was the Exorcist was 1970s. Okay. So. Um, saw it when it first came out, when people were standing in line to get in, and people were getting sick in the theaters, or supposedly getting sick, and ambulances were pulling up. Uh, which I think was all a publicity stunt, but um, was in the first row because everything was crowded. It was a midnight showing and got to see all the special effects right up close that's and personal. Nice. That's, that's, that was, a great, uh, that's a great movie. For those of you who have not watched that movie, you should try to get that. And then Mandy, what did you bring today? You got something going on. Uh, I've got a showcase tomorrow and I brought a scene from Better Call Saul. Very nice. So that's a, you said it was a Zoom? Or tell us about the showcase a little bit. It's an online uh, workshop through the studio one-on-one. -on -one. Cool. And then I had a couple of comments on uh, on YouTube about what a great actress you are. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, we love her. She's great. So, uh, yeah. So, we just, yeah. yeah. Made the rest of us feel like shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's very good. I keep doing great work. So uh, we're going to let you go first with Brandon. Is okay. it a male female? I'm guessing. It's a male male. Male male. But it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. So you're going to play. So you're going to play. Yeah. All right, cool. So Brandon, male, male. Sounds good. Michael. Have you seen Better Call Saul? I have. Actually, I was the background right now. Oh, okay. It's the new character of Mike. I do not. Oh, Mike is like really stoic. He's just like a don't fuck with me kind of guy. Totally oh, cool. Mike, are you talking? I know Breaking Bad. I yeah. totally know Mike. Yeah. You actually kind of remind me of Mike. Thank you. <laughs> stoic, uh, stoic, a stoic asshole. But yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy who plays in the uh, the booth mostly, right? You know, I haven't seen the whole show. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Uh, I just kind of plucked this scene out. All right, cool. Sweet. All right, so, okay. um, so let's do a dry read real quick or a cold read or whatever. I'll do Jimmy, if you could read me. Yes. Okay. What, the mayor didn't give you enough stickers? Are you going to tell me what we're doing here? Here's your coffee. Hope it's good to the last drop, because I'm billing you for the full hour for it. Coffee's not for me. It's for you. Oh, how thoughtful. Seriously, why'd you make me bring it to you? Here's what's going to happen. These two cops up there are from Philadelphia. They've come a long way to see me. When they come in, we're all gonna have a chat. After it's over, the young one, and the one writing everything down in his little notepad, he's gonna put the notepad back in his jacket. And when he does, you're gonna spill that coffee on him. A little accident, that's all. Uh, and why pray tell would I do that? Because I'm asking you to. It's the only reason you're here. I'm here because you want me to assault a police officer. I want you to spill a few ounces of lukewarm coffee on him. I very much doubt that satisfies the destination of assault. But hey, you're the lawyer. Right, how silly of me. All you want for me, all you want is for me to aid and abet you ripping off the guy's notepad, because that's what this is about, right? What are you, nuts? You can't be serious. I hate to say you owe me one, but you do. The assist I gave you with your missing problems, person's problems, one good turn, and so forth. You want a good turn? Here's your good turn. I'm gonna behave like an honest to God, law-abiding licensed attorney, because clearly you need one with whatever the hell is going on here. Those jokers out in the hall, I'm gonna make sure they dot their I's and cross their T's. Everything square and above board. That's what I'm gonna do. Every, and, oops, shit. And you'll be happy as hell that I'm here. But this Juan Valdez bump and dump? No way. Not gonna happen. That's a great line. 
Juan Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So any uh, any thoughts? Yeah, kill. I mean, no. It's it's. It is what you it have is. a client. A lawyer has a client who wants them to kind of break the law, mm -hmm. which is probably fairly normal. Um, yeah. And uh, but the lawyer is in this case going to stand up. It's like Jake Geddes last week wanting to keep his PI private investigator license. Um, the lawyer wants to keep her his license, her license, yeah. and uh, so this is the conflict of you know the lawyer trying to do what's right in the face of a client who clearly is has other ideas. Cool. And I think it just. It's so it's kind of hard knowing that kind of, like what kind of person Mike is, so I think you have to be more of a hard ass, right? Because Mike's more aggressive and like you know you're like ah you know you want me to do this, pour the coffee. You're being kind of gentle about it, and so maybe a little more of a. Uh, he be. is very like he's just the tone that he has is like you're gonna do this. Yeah, but like with that kind yeah. of like that you're gonna do this. Yeah. Or do you want to like switch? That. You play Jimmy this time. Yeah, I'll do play that. Mike. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. This would be interesting. What? The mayor didn't give you enough stickers? Mike Snappy rejoined during the place for Loser Night Live. Wait a minute. That's the whole thing, right? That's a direction. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who didn't win what? So that's that. an action. Yeah. But that's your line and that's your line. Yeah. Oh. There we go. <laughs> what? The mayor didn't give you enough stickers? Mike Snappy rejoinders, baleful lizard eyed look. Oh, that's an action. You don't need that line. Oh. Next time we'll bring oh, a, okay. we'll okay. a highlighter. Okay. Okay. Next time we'll bring a highlighter. <laughs> okay. So I'll do that sometimes. What? The mayor didn't give you enough stickers? Are you going to tell me what you're doing here? Here's your coffee. Hope it's good to the last drop. Cause I'm billing you for the full hour for it. Coffee's not for me, it's for you. Ah, oh, thoughtful. Seriously. So why do you make me bring it to you? Here's what's gonna happen. Those two cops out there are from Philadelphia. They've come a long way to see me. When they come in, we're all gonna have a chat. And after it's over, the young one, the one who's been writing everything down in his little notepad, he's gonna put that notepad back in his jacket. And when he does, you're gonna spill that coffee on him. A little accident. That's all. Oh, uh, and why? Pretell. tell. Why do I do that? Because I'm asking you to. It's the only reason you're here. I'm here because you want me to assault a police officer? I want you to spill a few ounces of lukewarm coffee on him. I very much doubt that satisfies the definition of assault, but hey, you're the lawyer. Right. How silly of me. All you want is for me to aid and abet you ripping off the guy's notepad. Because that's what this is all about, right? What are you, nuts? You can't be serious. I hate to say you owe me one, but you do. That assist I gave you with your missing persons problem? One good turn and so forth. You want a good turn? Here's a good turn. I'm going to behave like an honest-to-God, law-abiding, licensed attorney. Because clearly you need one. With whatever the hell is going on here, those jokers out in the hall, I'm going to make sure they dot their eyes. That's what I'm going to do. And you'll be happy as hell that I'm here. But this, this Juan Valdez bump and dump, no, not going to happen. I guess he, this is good. What, what happens here is when, when Mike says, you owe me one, that's kind of where the scene starts to flip. Up until this point, Jimmy is kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. But then, you know, when he says he's, you know, he resists doing what Mike's telling him to do, and Mike calls him out and says, you owe me one, that's when Jimmy suddenly says, flips. And I think that you could play that last speech as really more of a tough, you're almost changing positions with Mike. Mm -hmm. Because at this point now, you're, you, you realize that Mike is serious about making you go through this, and you need to put, the, you need to draw the line right there. And so maybe doing that, those, that last, those last lines more forceful than you did the first ones, shows that 
you know, this this is no longer a game for Jimmy, and he realizes that Mike is serious, and you know, and I think you you played Mike correctly because Mike is in control. He thinks he's in control of this whole situation. He's the boss. He's going to tell Jimmy what to do, and Jimmy's just going to lay down and do it. Yeah, Mike's definitely the alpha male. Yeah. But then yeah. Jimmy decides not to, right? And so then Mike has to go back to plan B, and that's that's calling on marker, right? So you owe me one to do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah. That's cool. I think you played good Jimmy. And I was, yeah. I was listening to that. What was that podcast you told me about, that lady? Uh, Audrey Helps Actors. Yeah, yeah. And so she goes into that, like, she says, try out different... Mm-hmm. different characters to see what really fits you yeah. the best. So that's very interesting. So so cool. Let's do it again, then we'll switch it up a little bit. Okay. okay. Steal Jimmy? Yeah. All right. What, the mayor didn't give you enough stickers? Are you going to tell me what you're doing here? Here's your coffee. Hope it's good to the last drop, because I'm billing you for the full hour for it. Coffee's not for me. It's for you. Oh, thoughtful. Seriously? So why do you make me bring it to you? Here's what's gonna happen. Those two cops out there are from Philadelphia. They've come a long way to see me. When they come in, we're all gonna have a chat. And after it's over, the young one, the one who's gonna be writing everything down in his little notepad, he's gonna put that notepad back in his jacket. And when he does, you're gonna spill that coffee on him. It's a little accident, that's all. And why, pray tell, would I do that? Because I'm asking you to. It's the only reason you're here. I'm here because you want me to assault a police officer. I want you to spill a few ounces of lukewarm coffee on him. I very much doubt that satisfies the definition of assault, but hey, you're the lawyer. Right. How silly of me. All you want me to do is to aid and abet you and ripping off the guy's notepad? Because that's what this is about, right? What are you, nuts? You cannot be serious. I hate to say you owe me one, but you do. That assist I gave you with your missing persons problem. One good turn and so forth. Sweet. You want a good turn? Here's your good turn. I want to behave like an honest to God, law abiding, licensed attorney because clearly you need one. And with whatever the hell's going on here, these jokers in the hall, I'm gonna make sure that they dot their I's and cross their T's. Everything's square and above board. That's what I'm gonna do. And you'll be happy as hell that I'm here. But this, this one valve is bump and dump? No, no way, not gonna happen. Might want to cover. No, no. But we done. You know that. Yeah. Jimmy, that last thing. You might want to even speak the at least at the beginning. Speak the word slower, so that it's you know more emphasis. Like you know, take this a, is a not so. going to happen. Right. You know mm-hmm. that. It's just very direct. It's like at this point, you you change even how you're speaking, and you you speak it very slow. So because you're getting to the point, right? And you don't want Mike to misunderstand a single word. So maybe. You know, try that a little bit slower. You can speak. You can go faster in the normal tone at the end when he's, you know, saying you can go into the Juan Valdez thing. But you know, I think at the beginning, you know, make it so that it's. I think that'll reinforce Jimmy's resolve not to do this if you just speak it more like you know each word very distinct and a little pause between each word so that he's really getting the point, understanding each word that's being said. Yeah. Cool. Might, oh, might, yeah, definitely. Might be good. I don't know. We, we certainly try it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take a shot. Yeah. What do you want to be? I'll be Mike. Mike? <clears throat> I want to be Jimmy. 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 Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Oh, I'm still, oh. Jimmy, Jimmy. I'm still Jimmy. Yeah. I'm still Jimmy. <laughs> 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 None of this role shifting. Uh, I know, that, that, that was <laughs> awesome. I things are going to change. Okay. <laughs> what, the mayor didn't give you enough stickers? Are you going to tell me what you're doing here? Here's your coffee. Hope it's good to the last drop.
because I'm billing you for a full, I'm billing you for a full hour for it. Coffee is not for me. It's for you. Oh, thoughtful. Seriously? So why'd you make me bring it to you? Here's what's going to happen. Those two cops out there that are from Philadelphia, they came a long way to see me. When they came in, we're all going to have a chat. And after it's over, the young one, the one who's going to be writing everything down in this little note, he's gonna put that notepad back in his jacket. And when he does, you're gonna spill that coffee on him. A little accident, that's all. Oh, and why, why pray tell would I do that? Because I'm asking you to. It's the only reason you're here. I'm here because you want me to solve a police officer? I want you to spill a few ounces of lukewarm coffee on him. I very much doubt that satisfies the definition of assault. But, hey, you're the lawyer. Right, how silly of me. All you want, me to, all you want is for me to aid and bait you ripping off the guy's notepad. Because that's what it's all about, right? What are you, nuts? You can't be serious. I hate to say you owe me one, but you do. That assist I gave you with your missing person's problem. One good turn and so forth. If you want a good turn, here's a good turn. I'm gonna be a I'm gonna behave like an honest to God, law abiding, licensed attorney. Of course, clearly you need one. With whatever the hell is going on here, those jokers out in the hall, I'm gonna make sure that they dot their I's and cross their T's. Everything square and above board. That's what I'm gonna do. And you'll be happy as hell that I'm here. But this Juan Valdez bump and dump, no way. Not gonna happen. What's in you? Coach. Yeah. yeah. Try at least on those first or last thing you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, a little more forceful, like I said, slower, and then the word just, to, you know, to reinforce to him that, you know, this isn't gonna happen. This isn't, this isn't gonna happen. You can pick up normal pace as you go on, but I think uh, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out and if you take those first words and just kind of slowly say that and very forceful, it's like, you are not going to do this. Something oh, similar okay. to, you know, where you just, yeah. you know, it really, it's kind of over the top, but sometimes that over the top is what really per get, gets the, the characters, uh, you know, across and, and people remember that. And, um, you know, Good just advice. see how that, see how that works. Is that that's, um, cool. yeah, that's, that's the turning point for Jimmy in, in this, in this scene, you know, when, Mike is desperate enough to want to call all an old marker, mm -hmm. you know, to make him do something that's illegal. You know, that just, that kind of turns him and it's asking him to put everything in jeopardy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. His, his career, I mean, he, he could get arrested as well. He loses law license. He loses his, you know, livelihood. I mean, it's it could be disaster for Jimmy if he, if this thing plays us off the wrong way for him. So... Cool. And Mike, you know, getting excited into Mike's character, right? What are two cops in Philadelphia doing talking to him, right? This is going to be some serious stuff going on if, right. if two cops are coming from Philadelphia to talk to him. To New Mexico. Right, to New Mexico. Yeah. And so what's going on? So what did Mike really do here? And not only that, but then Mike's asking his lawyer to do something illegal. So, okay, now you start questioning, man, this Mike guy must really have... A secret there must be something going on here that really is not not good right and so um and plus he's playing you know mike's playing the guy like he's totally in charge like he owns you because right. he's paying you he owns you right but that's his attitude he's that over and uh yeah so all right cool let's try it again that's, that's how you can kind of like understand the characters is just like analyze what's going on in the scene mm -hmm. two cops in philadelphia mm, okay mm -hmm. they ask you to do something illegal mm, okay 
He's, he's going to ask you, to, he's going to call in an old marker to get you to do it. Hmm, okay. So that gives you some insight into character. And it gives you insight to Jimmy's character that he's not going to go along with it, right? Right. So it's, these are little nuggets you can get out of the scene is to give you some insight into the, the characters. And so when you play the role, internalize that and make it like you're really those people. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. What, the manager didn't give you enough stickers? Are you going to tell me what you're doing here? Here's your coffee. Hope it's good to the last drop. Because I'm billing you for a full hour for it. Coffee is not for me. It's for you. Oh, thoughtful. Seriously? So why would you make me bring it to you? Here's what's going to happen. Those two cups over there are from Philadelphia. They've came a long way to see me. When they came in, we're all going to have a chat. And after it's over, the young one, the one, who's going to be writing everything down in his little notepad. He's going to put that notepad, oh, sorry, that notepad back in his jacket. And when he does, you're going to spill that coffee on him. A little accident, that's all. And why, pray tell, would I do that? Because I'm asking you to. It's the only reason you're here. I'm here because you want me to assault a police officer? I want you to spill a few ounces of lukewarm coffee on him. I very much doubt that satisfies the definition of Assault, but hey, you're, you're a lawyer. Right, how silly of me. All you want me to do, all you want me is for me to aid and abate you, abate you, ripping off a guy's notepad, because that's what this is about, right? What are you, nuts? You can't be serious. I hate to say you owe me one, but you do. That assist I gave you with your missing person problem. One good turn, and so forth. You want a good turn? Here's your good turn. I'm going to behave like an honest-to-God, law-abiding, licensed attorney. Of course, clearly you need one. With whatever the hell is going on here, those jokers out in the hall, I'm going to make sure they dot their I's and cross their T's. Everything square and above the board. That's what I'm going to do. And you'll be happy as hell that I'm here. This Juan Valdez bump and dump? No way. Not gonna happen. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Yeah, so that's good. uh let's 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 mix it up a little bit. You wanna do the action uh, scene? Yeah, let's uh let's now. do the action. I'm I'm curious to go from like better call Saul to the dark side there. So, so yeah. So it's uh, much bigger. So. Okay. Yeah. okay, did you get enough practice? Mm -hmm. Cool. cool. So uh one is it male, male, so male? male female. Okay. So you can oh. play the role of Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. Cool. So <sighs> probably all know what the Exorcist movie is about. Not necessarily. Oh, yeah. 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 Not necessarily. Well, it's um, bring me up. It's been a bit. Actress named Ellen Burstyn plays. Uh, I think it's uh, Chris. Yeah, her name is Chris. She's an actress. She's in Washington D.C. to uh, either do a play or I think they're filming a movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a daughter, Reagan. She calls Rags. And uh, some strange things start happening to Reagan, and it turns out that. Um, She's actually possessed. And so physically and the way she talks, everything, she starts to change. And um, so they've done tests on, on Reagan and, and you know trying to find a, a medical reason for what's going on. And when this scene happens, um, they've been through a, a lot of things. You're also seeing there's another character, Father Karras, who's a priest who is... Um, kind of 
he is starting to have little doubts about religion. Um, and there's another older priest whose father, uh, I can't remember his name, is played by a Swedish actor, Max von Sydow, who was a very famous uh, actor, actor. And he's, he's an archaeologist priest, and so he's been finding these things in, in the desert that have, you know, it's like strange demonic objects and stuff. And uh, so the police detective who's investigating this, what happens is that um, one of Chris's friends is sit, is like babysitting or house sitting with, uh, with Reagan while she's doing uh, her acting stuff. And what happens is, is that this guy is, is killed. Like he's thrown out the window or I don't remember he's exactly, but you know, he's, he's, so the police are investigating this murder. And the policeman is, is talking to the to the priest too about what's going on. But this scene, uh, Chris is in in the hospital talking to the doctors because I think at this point Reagan's in the in the hospital too. They're they're trying to figure out what what's causing all this strange behavior and and stuff. And so Chris has been through a lot of stuff already. People, you know, the, with the police and with other doctors and stuff. So she's in this clinic with this doctor uh, talking about what's going on and what they can do about it and the ending thing and last scene is, is interesting because it really kind of that sets the whole movie going so let me just read through it the, the first sure. time there's a, there's a lot of there's some long you know paragraphs here um, but just read through it and then we can talk about the characters sounds great all right Bill you're playing director you're Chris and we're reading it out loud? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see anymore. Except among primitive cultures, we call it... Wow. Possession. Quite frankly, we don't know much about it except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the patient's delusion that his body's been invaded by an alien. A spirit, if you will. In times like these... The entity possessing the victim is supposed to be so-called demon or devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it, I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum. I don't care what you call it, I'm not going to put her away. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry Christ, 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all your bullshit. There was one outside chance of a cure. I think it is a shock treatment. As I say, it's very outside chance, but since you're so opposed to your daughter being hospitalized... Will you name it? For God's sakes, what is it? Have you any religious beliefs? No, I don't. And your daughter? Why? Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNeil? Come again? It's a stylized ritual in which Ravis and priests try to drive out so-called invading spirits. It's pretty much a discarded method these days, except by the Catholics who keep it in the closet as a sort of embarrassment. It has worked, in fact, although not for the reason they think, of course. It was purely the force of suggestion. The victim's belief in possession helped cause it. And just the same way, this belief in the power of exorcism can make it disappear. Jesus. Are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? So, first, actually, before we go on, what is that word? That somnambuliform. Somnambuliform. Somnambuliform, or something like that. You can just, you know, we call it possession or something. You know, it's. it's <laughs> Um, I don't um, even remember the, what they called it in the movie. It was, I don't know why I wanted to say I wanted to say subliminal, but um, it must be a clinical word for some kind of mental condition. Those clinical terms. But uh, so, from the clinical director's perspective, you know, he has a a pretty hostile person in front of him, yeah. uh, who's, who's been really frustrated about the medical profession's lack of lack of you know ability to diagnose and understand what's going on with her daughter so he's he's going in here he knows he kind of knows this right 
And so he's it's her and whatever. And of course, Chris is, is totally against that, as you can see in here. And I think the, the clinic director, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward role until you get to, I think, this last part where he starts talking about the exorcism. Here he's probably going to be walking on eggshells, right? She's just yelled at you and, and told her you're not going to put in a clinic because she's not going to go down the path that you know, yeah. right, which is the medical, the science path. And there's this one last thing, and you probably really do not want to bring it up to her because you're afraid that she's going to bite your head off, and that, that this is not going to go over well, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> we talked about all this medical stuff, and now this thing called exorcism. And if you've heard of exorcism, you probably have a bad thing of it. His perspective, though, is, is that it works probably because if you believe in it, then you believe in, in the cure, and it's not really anything supernatural, it's just psychological, right? Mm -hmm. But you're kind of hesitant to tell her about it because you're afraid of her reaction. So when you get to that part of it, just picture yourself like telling this, delivering incredible or bad news to somebody you don't want to do because you know their reaction is not going to be good. So that's, that's kind of the emotion when you're doing that. Okay. And Chris, I mean, you just, Chris is fed up with the whole thing. If you've seen the movie, you know what, yeah. you know, she's just, she's just exhausted, with exhausted with process. all this stuff. And then you can imagine, you know, if you've ever been in a medical situation or someone that, that you know, has been, you're seeing doctor after doctor and they say, Oh, it could be this. It could be that we need more tests. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. And after a while, you just reach this point where just tell me what's wrong. Yeah. Right. And, and I, that's where Chris is at. And she, her, her patience is just like, extremely thin at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, we can do it again. Cool. Sure. It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely <coughs> see anymore, except among primitive cultures. We call it possession. Quite frankly, we don't know much about it, except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the patient's delusion that his body's been invaded by an alien intelligence, a spirit, if you will. In times, gone by, the entity possessing the victim is supposed to be so-called a demon or a devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it. I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum. It's... it's... I don't care what you call it. I'm not going to put her away. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Christ. 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all of your bullshit. There is one outside chance of a cure. I think of it as a shock treatment. As I say, it's a very outside chance. But then since you're opposed to your daughter being hospitalized... Will you name it for God's sakes? What is it? Have you any religious beliefs? No, I don't. And your daughter? Why? Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNeil? Come again? It's a stylized ritual in which rabbis and priests try to drive out a so-called invading spirit. It's pretty much discarded these days, except by the Catholics who keep it in the closet as sort of an embarrassment. It has worked, in fact, although not for the reason they think, of course. It was purely the force of suggestion. The victim's belief in possession helped cause it. And in just the same way, this belief in the power of exorcism can make it disappear. Jesus, are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? And I think here you can also experiment with volume, especially the, you know, the clinic director. And be speaking in, a, in can maybe a normal voice and very authoritarian because you know, you think you know what you're talking about. And when you start talking about the exorcist, maybe just lower the volume a little uh, bit, right? Okay. Because you're, you, it's a, a sensitive topic and, you know, Fair, again, yeah. you know, it's that give kind of a contrast to the scene for that, for that character. It's like, you, you've, you've given her all the scientific evidence. Now you're going to do something that you may not, that you kind of believe in, but it's, it's kind of like far-fetched and you would rarely ever, you know, recommend this to anyone. So, you know, maybe just drop the, just slightly drop the volume and, and you know, kind of like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You want to try it again? Yeah, let's do it. It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see anymore, except among primitive cultures. 
we call it possession. Quite frankly, we don't know much about it except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the patient's delusion that his body's been invaded by an alien intelligence, a spirit, if you will. In times gone by, the entity possessing the victim is supposed to be a so-called demon or devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it. I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum. It's... I don't care what you call it. I'm not going to put her away. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, Christ. 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all of your bullshit. There is one outside chance of a cure. I think of it as a shock treatment. As I say, it's very outside chance. But then since you're so opposed to your daughter being hospitalized... Will you name it for God's sakes? What is it? Have you any religious beliefs? No. And your daughter? Why? Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNeil? Come again? It's a stylized ritual in which Ravison priests try to drive up a so-called invading spirit. It's pretty much a discarded these days, except by the Catholics who keep it in the closet as sort of an embarrassment. It has worked. In fact, although not the reason they think, of course, it was purely the force of suggestion. The victim's belief in possession helped cause it. And just the same way this belief in the power of exorcism can make it disappear. Jesus, are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? Good. Like maybe a little higher on that last line too, because what 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 was really cool here is is the dynamic now that's that's going on, where you've got the the normal tone coming from from you. Mm -hmm. You're you know much more louder. It goes back to his normal tone. You're still loud, and then you go softer, and then if you go louder, even you know at the end, it's going to be like you know mm -hmm. the audience is going to look at that, and and it's like a the volume is a, is a roller coaster in terms of you know what what we're experiencing. Yeah. So I think that is cool. um, you want to jump in? Kind of works. Sure. Next case. <clears throat> Do you want to play Chris? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ask you. Oh, oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not good with clinical words. Yeah. Okay. No one's good with that one word in there. That was, uh, if we are skipping this one. Yeah. Which word? Uh, okay. Some num num Is that okay. what you just said? Oh, possession. Yeah, yeah. Just say possession. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, it's supposed to be more. Yeah, uh, except among primitive cultures. We call it possession. Quite frankly, we don't know much about it, except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the body's patient uh, sorry, Lisa the body's patient's disillusion that his body has been invaded by an alien intelligence. A spirit, if you will. In times gone by, the entity possessing the victim is supposed to be so-called demon or devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it. I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum. It's... I don't care what you call it. I'm not going to put her away. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Christ. 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all of your bullshit. There's, there is one outside chance of a cure. I think of it as a shock treatment. As I say, it's a very outside chance. But then since you're so opposed to your daughter being hospitalized. Will you name it for God's sakes? What is it? Have you ever had any re religious beliefs? No, I don't. And your daughter? Why? <clears throat> Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNeil? Come again? <clears throat> it's a stylized ritual in which rubbish and rabbit, rabbis, 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 rabbis and persists presence try to drive out a so-called evading spirit. It's pretty much dis 
regarded these days, except by the Catholics who keep it in the closet as some sort of embarrassment. It has worked. In fact, although not for the reasons they think. Of course, it was purely the force of suggestion. The victim's belief and possession helped caused it in and just the same way this belief and the power of exorcism can make it disappear. Jesus, are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? Well, so I'm just wondering, like, uh, in Uwe, does the doctor, I mean, he just kind of takes her, I mean, she's obviously upset. Yeah. Her beatings. But, <laughs> yeah. but does he say pretty like, like yeah, that? I mean, or does, uh, he get, does he ever escalate or like, um, do you no, remember? I mean this. The, I think the dynamic is that she's this like big movie star actress, yeah. oh, so and so yeah. she's just in there being like, "Why can't you get this shit done, you guys?" And everybody's like, "Sorry, ma'am." Yeah. Big yeah. movie star. So even actress. more so then. So instead of like being kind of like flatlining a little bit more, like taken aback a little bit, mm. where it's actually like, you know, yeah, like I got, I get you, mm. right? So feed off of that, like. I get you're upset. So, but I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's what, a, you know, if you've ever seen doctors, you mm -hmm. know, in, a, in their bedside manner or, you know, delivering that, mm -hmm. there are, you know, no one wants to deal with someone who is, is irate. And, right. and they I mean, just, we like to avoid that kind of conflict. Doctors are trained in order to be able to handle this kind of thing. And so that's why I think, you know, in this in this scene mm -hmm. you know the, the the doctor is staying somewhat calm because that's what they're trained sure, to do sure. but at the same time you know any human being is going to be feel uncomfortable when someone's yelling at them right right which is going on here right um, so it should be more discomfort or more um, or she's the big star and be more um uh, but the doctor is, is confident too because the, doctor. the doctor is the one who has the medical expertise here and so you know what does an actress know Right. about what's going on with her daughter, you know, medically wise, because, you know, he knows, he should know. Right, right. They're, they're, education. Yeah. They're doing it right. So I think it's almost, it's almost an equal in sure. terms of, you know, their, their self-perspective, right? right. He, he believes that he, he can fix this. Right. He knows what's going on. She, you know, is strong-willed and, and just wants to get, you know, rid of all this stuff and, mm -hmm. and you know, she knows that she, she's going to be the one putting the pressure on, like, you know, do something. You know, just don't give me all this stuff. 88 yeah. doctors and, you know, you're giving me all this mumble jumbo that we can't even pronounce. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, just yeah. tell me. And uh, so I think it's it's kind of like they're they see each other as equals. But the way it plays out in the scene is different. Right. Sure. The, the doctor is trying to maintain his, his composure where. Chris is not to, uh, no, right. making she's any attempt. Patience. She's she's already she's lost, lost patience a long yeah. time ago at yeah. this point. So, um, right. but yeah, you could play. I mean, the it's a subtle role for the doctor, right? And so you can kind of play it, yeah. You know, different ways. You can try to to be a little bit more, you know, compassionate, mm -hmm. or you can be very clinical. I mean, that that's a choice that you have that the, the actor plays the doctor can, has is how are you gonna <clears throat> how are you gonna really do this. Right. And how are you going to react to her outburst? Yeah, how are, you going to, how are you going to lower it? You know, because you're, what you're taught is that, you know, if she's doing an outburst, you just lower, you, you try to calm yeah, things down, it. right? Yeah. Whereas, you know, most of us who aren't trained in that are going to escalate along with it, right. right? But here, this is a trained professional. They're not going to, they're not going to try to escalate it. They're going to try to bring it down, which is I, it's I, my suggestion in that last you know, monologue that you that that the doctor is saying is bring the volume down a little bit because the doctor clearly knows that Chris is really irate, really upset with this whole thing, and what he's going to try to do is just lower it, lower the tension, lower all the emotions and stuff like that, and that's what he's going to attempt to do. And of course, it doesn't work, but that's that's I think the interesting part of the scene is that you know no one really changes in this scene. But it gives an insight into Chris's character and, and where you are in the story, right? Up to this point, it's all been medical solutions, trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. But this doctor, you know, 
reluctantly is suggesting an exorcism, in which he doesn't believe in the in the supernatural aspect of it, but the, the psychological aspect perhaps might work. You know, that's kind of a last resort. And by going down this path of the exorcism, mm -hmm. that like like takes the lid off the story. At this point, you know, it becomes a supernatural story. It, mm -hmm. This is a, you know, cool. the priest comes in and they do an exorcism. I mean, this is real, right? Mm -hmm. There is a demon. There is a devil inside of Reagan. And that's that's the story, and this this is the point in the story where that the lid comes off, and you know becomes not just you know oh this is a medical story, this is a story of a girl that's troubled and has some disease, and we're going to solve it, and it goes from that to being a supernatural horror story. Right. So that's yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's try let's try it again. Yeah. I'm glad you get your hand warmer there. I know it's very nice. <laughs> <clears throat> it looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see anymore, except among primitive cultures. We call it possession. Quite frankly, we don't know much about it, except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the patient's disillusion that his body has been invaded by an alien t intelligence, a spirit, if you will. In times gone by, the entity possessing the victim is supposed to be so-called demon or devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it. I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum. That's... I don't care what you call it. I'm not going to put her away. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, Christ. 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all of your bullshit. There is one outside chance of a cure. I think of it as shot treatment. As I say, it's a very outside chance. But then since you're so opposed to your daughter being hospitalized. Will you name it for God's sakes? What is it? Have you... Have you any religious beliefs? No, I don't. And your daughter? Why? Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNaught? Come again? It's a stylized ritual in which rabbis, rabbis and priests try to drive out a so-called Invading spirits. It's pretty much discarded these days, except by the Catholics who keep it in the closet as a sort of embarrassment. It has worked. In fact, although not for the reason they think, of course, it was purely the force of suggestion. The victim's belief in Possession helped caused it. And in just the same way, this belief in the power of exorcism can make it disappear. Jesus. Are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? Yeah, you know, like the. did a good job on the doctor. I think uh, that last year, like trying to carefully explain, mm -hmm. you know, and any word that you say could provoke the outburst. And so I think that was a, a good way to approach it. Mm -hmm. And interesting, I think that that first, first part, this I think is a great opportunity for facial expression on Chris's part. Mm -hmm. And if I was directing it, I would make, and I'm, I'm not sure if they did it in the movie or not, but listen, I mean, you just look at the words they're talking about, you know, it's like primitive cultures, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it starts with conflict and guilt. So he's, just, he's saying that, that Reagan may have conflict and guilt that had done this. What do you mean guilt? You know, mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, body's been invaded by the alien intelligence. Look at these words, alien intelligence. And then spirit and, you know, demon, devil, right? I mean, this is a doctor who's using these terms, ex trying to explain. And I think if Chris is, you know, if you're Chris listening, this is like, you, you're, you don't, you, you're shocked. You, you can't comprehend 
what he's saying is like these words are just not you know your daughter sitting there in a hospital room she's her face is getting weird she's you know vomiting people's faces and yeah. you know all this kind of stuff and he starts talking about primitive cultures and demons and stuff and and you'd be like Heck yeah. You just well, can't comprehend. It takes a while for you to understand yeah. what this is all about, right? So even though she doesn't have any lines, I'd be cutting <clears throat> to Chris's face mm-hmm. to show that, you know, that she's kind of like yeah. I'm just this a dumbstruck. You know, this awesome. is, I mean, just this like, so what is this? You know, am I in a, a madhouse How or something? How dare you even say this shit to me? Yeah, because <laughs> the implications Bullshit. of this first thing, basically blaming that this is, either, is either Reagan's fault or a combination, or it's your fault, or it's both you and Reagan's fault that you brought this on, that this conflict of guilt, and therefore it's almost like accusing you of mm-hmm. causing this thing, and at this point Chris would just go ballistic over something like that. So right. here you're starting to boil up. So when you say this, this line about you know an asylum. This stuff has been boiling up in you, right? And then yeah. what the, in his response to that first thing that he's saying is, like, mm-hmm. bam, that's going to, yeah. like, just blow things a bit. I'm going to take a crack at it. We'll, okay. do, we'll do it a couple times, and we'll wrap it up. Right. Right. That's all good? Oh, so I'll, be, I'll be the nice, I'll be the nice uh, Jewish doctor. Of course. The rabbis, the rabbis and the Catholics. It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see in except among primitive cultures. We call it what we're calling it? Possession. Possession. It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see anymore. Except among primitive cultures. We call it possession. Quite frankly. We don't much, quite frankly, we don't much, what am I looking at here? Except we don't much we don't know. We don't know much. about it. No. We don't know much about it except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the patient's delusion that his body's been invaded by an alien intelligence, a spirit, if you will. In times gone by, the entity possessing the victim is supposed to be a so-called demon or devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it. I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum. It's... I don't care what you call it. I'm not going to put her away. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Christ. 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all of your bullshit. This is one outside chance of a cure. I think if it's a shock treatment, as I say, it's, it's a very outside chance. But then since you're so obsessed, you're so opposed to your daughter being hospitalized. Will you name it for God's sakes? What is it? Have any religious beliefs? No, I don't. And your daughter? Why? Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNeil? Come again? It's a stylized ritual in which rabbis and priests try to drive out a so-called invaded spirit. It's pretty much discarded these days, except by the Catholics who keep it in the closet as a sort of embarrassment. It has worked. In fact, although not for the reason they think, of course, it is purely the force of suggestion. The victim's belief in possession helped cause it, and in just the same way, this belief in the power of exorcism can make it disappear. Jesus, are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? I almost like, when we've done it a few times, Mm -hmm. the last line of Chris, instead of the higher volume, go back to how you did it originally, Mm -hmm. which I, I think, now that I've heard it, heard it a few times, mm-hmm. you know, just ending the scene on the lower volume, uh, it might be. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because oh, it'll contrast them with the next scene. Great. And I think at this point, you know, you've, you've yelled out so much and you've exasperated that hearing this, you know, it's more of a, 
or even like the most like what Jesus, Jesus explanation marks and like me. Jesus and then drop it down. Are you you know going to lean in? Yeah. Are you telling me like Jesus? Okay. Like what the but like you know? what, the way you did it the first few times, you know, I think going back to that, which is more like that, I think probably plays better. If I was director, I would probably after seeing both performances, I would go with uh, the first one, I think. Okay. And actually, you play a good classic doctor. Well, thank you. I can definitely see it. And where did it go where doctors had that little pizza cutter looking thing on their head? Mm. Oh, the light oh. reflecting? Yeah. yeah. I, oh, right. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I see Pio wearing the sunglasses now with the third uh, glass. Uh, yeah. In fact, Joe Alonso was wearing, uh, hey, Joe, uh, was wearing some sunglasses today with the, uh, the third eye. So anyway, oh. It's a, it's a thing. It's a, it's a thing. Yeah. So let's... Uh, do the end, okay? From the top. It looks like a type of disorder that you rarely ever see anymore, except from among primitive cultures. We call it possession. Quite frankly, we don't know much about it except that it starts with some conflict or guilt that eventually leads to the patient's illusion that his body's been invaded by an alien intelligence, a spirit, if you will. In times gone by, the entity possessing the victim is, be, is supposed to be a so-called demon or devil. Look, I'm telling you again, and you'd better believe it. I'm not about to put her in a goddamn asylum! It's... I don't care what you call it, I'm not going to put her away! Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Christ! 88 doctors and all you can tell me with all of your bullshit! There's one outside chance of a cure. I think if it's a, a shock treatment, I, as I say, it's very outside chance. But then since you're so opposed to your daughter being hospitalized. Will you name it for God's sakes? What is it? Have you any religious beliefs? No, I don't. And your daughter? Why? Have you ever heard of exorcism, Miss McNeil? Come again? It's a stylized ritual in which rabbis and priests try to drive out a so-called invading spirit. It's pretty much discarded these days except by Catholics who keep it in the closet as sort of a, an embarrassment. It has worked, in fact, although not for the reason they think, of course. It's purely the force of a suggestion. The victims believe in possession help cause it, and in just the same way, this belief in the power of exorcism can can make it disappear. Jesus, are you telling me to take her to a witch doctor? Good. I'm slowing down my, my uh, hmm? I'm slowing down my talk. You are, yeah. you are. Good, you're adapting to the role. Yeah. Go, go. <laughs> These classes are paying off. So yes. Are. So any other thoughts until uh, till next week? I gotta say. Um, since I just uh, now just recently came back uh, from, you know, missing a, few, uh, a week ago, I gotta say you did a fantastic job with your acting. Like, oh my god, that is amazing. Yes. yes. <laughs> Especially like uh, your acting with uh, Chris, that was awesome. I, I felt the chills. Watch the video, everyone, and watch her play Mrs. Mulray from Chinatown <laughs> because it is an amazing performance. Yeah, it really is. It really is. So, so with that, said, good luck with your Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap.